Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Will and in this video what I want to do is to kind of continue from the Viewport 3D series. Um, in this particular case, from my last video looking at Viewport 3D, I was focusing on utilizing Viewport 3D in a sort of 2D perspective. So still retaining the properties and the overall environment of a 3D um, plane, but actually viewing the viewport from a 2D angle you know, so in that in this particular video, what I want to do is actually take it one step further and look at texturing. I want to look how you texture a piece of geometry in a 3D plane uh, with some image, some kind of graphic. And let's go ahead and start this particular part of the tutorial. So firstly, as you can see on the right hand side, I have some kind of checkerboard. And this is actually a piece of geometry that is... Um, that is facing the, um, the face of this geometry is facing the viewer. So it appears as a 2D piece of geometry, but it's actually being rendered in 3D space. The information is 3D in nature. And um, it has a bit of a lighting. It's actually a blue checkerboard, but I've added an ambient light um, property. So it appears a little bit purple. Uh, I might touch upon that. You can see that on the left-hand side, I have these RGB alpha and the alpha value, which actually correlates to a kind of a purple um, lighting for the ambient color. Um, so yeah, so let's look at things. So for example, or for starters, better said, Viewport 3D presents um, a relatively simple way, I would say, yet quite effective way at the same time to texture 3D geometry. And in this particular video, we're going to be looking at how 3D can be rendered in a 2D perspective as we, as we covered and how to texture um, the geometry thereof. In order to texture, Viewport 3D needs to determine the direction of a surface, the direction that the surface is facing at a given time. And there are two main properties that you can use to actually um, control the texturing information. And that, are, that is normal values and that is texture coordinate values. They're both properties. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to um, resize my window a little bit. Just going to make some more space for Visual Studio. And I'm going to go ahead and close this demonstration. I do have my MSDN up as I was doing a bit of research. But, in, you know, in fact, let's just maximize the screen. I'll zoom in just a little bit. So what I want to do is to firstly actually sort of demonstrate how this looks like in code. And then if needed, I'll use the visual, like a sort of a visual example. So... This assumes you saw the first part of this little series uh, looking at how to generate the geometry itself. So I'm not going to explain what all this code is doing. I even have the source code available on my website. There'll be links in the description. So I'll gloss over things. So for example, we have here position values which correlate to the, um, to the vertices being rendered on the screen. We can sort of consider this as a vertex buffer of sorts. And I've also defined a set of normal values. And these normals are, are stored in a vector 3D buffer. And uh, what I'm doing, I have a vector 3D collection, better said, and I'm adding uh, a new vector 3D and I'm defining an X, Y, and Z coordinate. So if I just kind of uh, bring up the IntelliSense, you'll see that there's a double X, double Y, and double Z. <coughs> Do excuse me. And uh, what this correlates to is um, basically as you're drawing the triangles on the screen, you are basically helping to define where the um, texture is being mapped onto the geometry via X, Y, and Z. Because we're dealing with uh, a piece of geometry that appears flat, uh, I actually kept the Z to zero for each and it just makes life a little bit simple. So as you can see, um, most of, the G, uh, most of the Z values are kept to zero because we're only dealing with a sort of a 2D perspective. I'm going to leave some resources to MSDN um, in the description to do if you want to do some further reading because I will admit it, it, it does take a little bit of experimentation in order to set these values unless you know exactly what's going on. Because if I hop to the MSDN and we have a little look, I will just split screen this. I'll recite what's being what's being said here. So we're going to read just about here. So the texture coordinates property specifies a collection of points 
that tell the graphic system how to map the coordinates that determine how a texture is drawn to the vertices of the mesh. Texture coordinates are specified as a value between 0 and 1 inclusive, and which is interesting because I sort of... Um, what came to mind was like sort of UV mapping properties, having a value between zero and one inclusive, if I'm not mistaken. So I was not too sure if there was some kind of correlation to that. Um, knowing a little bit more um, theory behind texturing and 3D modeling would definitely help in this, uh, in this realm. As with the normal properties, the graphic system can calculate default texture coordinates, but you might choose to set different texture coordinates to control the mapping of a texture that includes parts of a repeating pattern. So perhaps you have, say, a piece of geometry um, that is, say, like the checkerboard you saw. and But let's just say instead of a checkerboard texture, it was a square, a, a, just a shaded square that you have an image file of, and you want to repeat that texture. So you can define that using texture coordinate values. And of course, um, you can go on to read the, the documentation. Uh, I couldn't really find out how the numbers on the for the vector 3D correlate exactly, but what I tended to do was to keep it almost one to one. So if you look at the values of the, um, I, I believe it's the position values, yeah. So we have minus one, minus one, zero for one vertex, one, minus one, zero, minus one, one, zero, and one, one, zero. When I kept things simple, considering I was rendering a simple square comprised of, if I'm not mistaken, composed of three, um, sorry, two different triangles, having the values 1 minus 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 1 minus 1, 0, and minus 1 minus 1, 0 was intuitive enough to um, retain quite a consistent texturing. But then I did have an issue, which you may run into, of clipping, and I'm going to demonstrate this. So I will admit, I'm not 100% sure how these correlate, but in a very simple example of, uh, of when you're working within a buffer and you're looking at a 2D, or rather a 3D piece of geometry from a 2D plane, then having this configuration for your normals seems to be sufficient enough. However, if you mess with the depth um, information, or even so, the rotate transform of your overall mesh, you can start to experiment to see what will happen and then you can thus um, deduct how you want to configure your um, buffer that stores your geometry information. Because when you think about the bigger picture, you may not opt to render an entire scene within a buffer, but rather you will have a viewport that will utilize um, resources stored within buffers to composite a scene. So for example, if I go ahead for this rotate transform, and it, it diverges a little bit from the main topic, but just for the sake of showing you guys what all these properties sort of do, let's say I change the angle of rotation to 45 degrees, and I keep the um, the point of rotation um, quite uniform along the XYZ axis. And let's, let's see what happens. Let's, let's observe the changes. So my visual, studio, my visual, visual studio session is just loading up. And there doesn't seem to be much of a change. So I'm just going to go back into my code. And I'm going to just see what's happening here. So my rotate transform, new axis angle, vector 3D. At 45 degrees angle. Let's just play around with this a little bit. Let's change the axis of rota the um, point of rotation to 10. And let's just play around with, say, I don't know, 75. And as you can see, we have a slight, well, I say slightly, quite a significant uh, rotation applied to the geometry. Um, it's going off at, a, I think it was a 45 degrees angle I set it up. But funnily enough, the viewport is clipping the edges, which sort of neatly ties me into what I want to talk about next. I have on my hard disk, on my file, another um, texture. It's called GG, GG underscore zero stands for game grid, actually, in case you're curious. And I'm just going to load that now. Okay. So that's the texture. Now I'm going to lay it flat. So I want to take away the rotation effect. So I'll reset these values to zero, thus nullifying the effect of a rotation transform. And what seems to happen is that 
the um, viewport clips the overall image. <clears throat> Do excuse me. So there are a couple ways you can circumvent this sort of behavior. I believe ideally you want to work within the buffer, um, the confines of the buffer itself and its dimensions to fix this sort of issue. But it may also come down to the intuition of the size of the texture that you're actually um, getting uh, when you create the texture itself from, say, an image editor like Photoshop, you know, the size um, that you render it at. Uh, for example, and alternatively, if we look at how I'm generating that um, bitmap graphic um, over here via the bitmap image class, you'll see that I've defined a height and width of 1,000 and 2,000. I was just experimenting. Let's tone that down. Um, if I go and hop to my XAML, which should load in a, in a little bit right now, you'll see that the dimensions of the viewport is width 1080, and if I'm not mistaken, um, the height is 720, or about, that's, that's 1080. Let's have a look at the height. 710, so let's just say 710. So 710 for the height, and um, I've already forgotten. I think it was 1080. 1080 for the width. I'm gonna go ahead and start that, and let's have a look at what happens. And of course, uh, I still got the clipping, so I was quite perplexed as to what was going on here. So I'm going to suggest an, a workaround for you guys. Um, and just a note, one thing, one reason I'm going to um, opt for this workaround is because if you go ahead and try to shrink the image itself below the um, dimensions of the viewport, you will you will actually observe the following. So let's just go with something absurdly small, 40 by 40 you're going to get this strange effect. So, yeah. So you're going to get this stretching effect. And as you can see, the texture itself is it's 40 by 40, but uh, Viewport 3D stretches it to fit the um, bounds of the viewport, um, relatively speaking. So you get this really blurry, <laughs> kind of like an N64 texture. It's kind of funny, actually. So um, that wasn't good. That wasn't good enough, I suppose. So... I'm going to go ahead and reset this. So, uh, what's that? Height, 710. And 1080. So, what I opted to do is, in my image editor, it was quite simple. So, hopefully, I've got the right session up. And I'll just wait for that to load. I have a um, two textures. And what I just did, I introduced a padding. So, of course, this is not a technical solution, and I wouldn't call it a solution in itself. It's more of a workaround. But I know this is a bit frozen, but what you should be able to see, and I think my paint on there just disappeared on me. <laughs> I introduced some padding, so there was some white space there. It's fighting with my computer now. I introduced a bit of padding. So, over here, it's a little bit hard to see. Hopefully, I can just maximize this without too much trouble. The original texture is as thus. And as you can see from the top, it's quite hard to see, I, I appreciate. But here on the left, all the way to the right, it's actually 1080. Might be able to see it on the top bit there on the ruler. And going along the um, height from 0 to 720, as I've set it there. What I wanted to do, same dimensions, but I actually added padding of um, 100 on the sides, just about approximated it, and 200 for the top and the bottom. And thus, I still retained the, um, the overall image has this kind of padding around it, but it still fits within the viewport to avoid clipping. So when I use gg uh, underscore zero underscore cropped, if I go back to my Visual Studio, if I say unders underscore cropped, and I load my project, you'll see that I sort of circumvent the cropping that was going on which uh, I wouldn't call it the best solution. I wouldn't even call it a solution. I'll call it a workaround, as I said. But at least it's something you can deal use to deal with the situation if it is an issue. You may have issues down the line if you're reusing this buffer information for, say, a piece of geometry that relies on um, seamless textures because what's actually happening is, is, there, is a, there is a padding around this. It's just that you can't see it because the background is white. So... Um, uh, that's something to take into account. I couldn't find a proper solution for that, but I hope this workaround may at least come as some form of an idea that might help you. 
Okay, so moving on to things. Uh, let's look at texture coordinates. Uh, where did I define the buffer? Let's see where I am. Triangle indices. So I called, if I go to the definition here of M side plane, it's a point collection. I've gone ahead and instantiated this point collection and I populated it. So I'll read the comment I left here. So texture coordinate values populate a buffer holding point values. Each point is defined by an X, Y value. Each point cor correlates to a vertex of the geometry. So as you can see, in my position values, which correlates to the vertex information, I have one, two, three, four vertices, and I have one, two, three, four texture coordinates. Each of them, <coughs> excuse me, each of them <laughs> actually correlate to our vertices. And I believe this works in tandem with the triangle indices, because if you don't have the texture coordinates defined or the normals, one of the two, uh, it does describe this on the MSDN uh, documentation, by the way, but you have triangle indices defined, then what will happen is that the um, texture mapping will be implicitly um, applied to the geometry. Uh, let's see if I can demonstrate that. So let's say, for example, if I go to my normal values, if I just take all these away, because we have triangle indices defined, we should hopefully still retain our textures, even though our normals are not defined, as you can see. Um, so I, I actually wonder to myself right now, what would happen if I get rid of my triangle indices? I don't know what would happen. According to MSDN, only one normal will be, will be um, generated implicitly, I think. Um, so let's have a look, from my reading before at least. Yeah, so we're getting a bit of a strange effect here. Um, it's trying to solve this. Um, because we didn't, we didn't define enough information to correctly texture this geometry. And as you can see, there is clipping, quite heavy clipping going on here. So uh, yeah, it is a good idea for you to always define the triangle indices, which basically, as a recap, what the triangle indices does, it just tells ver um, Viewport 3D which vertexes or vertices are connected to which vertices. So I've already described that and explained it in my other video. If you're not too sure what that's about, do check out the first video in this series. Okay, so this is kind of wrapping up things. Uh, it's just a short video to kind of just explore a little bit more of Viewport 3D and uh, looking a little bit at the texturing. What I'm gonna do most likely for the next video is now take it another step further. Now that I've shown you guys how to texture a 2D piece of geometry, I wanna show you guys how to texture, or well, a 3D piece of geometry, but in a 2D plane, but let's say a more complex piece of geometry in the buffer, such as a cube or a sphere. I think a sphere would be fun. And I even went ahead of myself to, have to write this functionality, which calculates UV uh, values which I did get off Wikipedia for the formulas because I'm not great at maths. <laughs> so um, if I'm not mistaken with my maths, this will calculate UV given a dy, a delta y, I think it is, delta z, and a delta y for the uh, v values. So there's something to look forward to for the next uh, coming videos, hopefully, in the Viewport 3D series. So I think that's just about everything I want to go through for this particular part of the walkthrough. Uh, again, it's relatively simple to def to render uh, geometry using Viewport 3D. Uh, I do believe it is based on the Managed DirectX SDK. Uh, there's, uh, again, more. Uh, I'll leave links in the description. And if you want a copy of the source code, do visit my website. I'll leave a link in the description where I have already the source code to generate the geometry. But um, I will add into that source code how to um, the texture source code part. So, you know, with the, um, is it positions? No, the normals, sorry, normals and texture values, texture coordinate values, I will add that to the source code because it's not there yet on the website. So I'll get around to that. So I hope you enjoyed this video, found it somewhat informative, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.